Now, as far as Oxford and Cambridge is concerned, I'm often asked about that. Um, what do you need to get into Oxford and Cambridge? Well, first of all, you need to have good GCSE results, and that means maybe uh, seven or eight grade eights or nines um, at GCSE, and you need to be predicted really good A-level results, probably minimum of one A star and two A's, but ideally even better than that. And you need to choose the right A-level subjects for the degree you're applying for. You know, if you want to be an engineer, you have to be doing physics and, and maths. If you want to read maths, you need to do further maths and so on. And you can read about all these requirements by going on to the university websites um, anytime you like. Now, with Oxford and Cambridge, you're going to, in addition to these tricky tests, you're going to have a demanding interview. And that means that you need to start reading around your subject in an informed way. You need to be ready to talk about books that you have read, which demonstrate your interest. And the more you can uh, do that, the better your chances are of being able to cope with a difficult interview. You need to have read about the university course you're applying for on the university website in some detail. You need to go for an open day um, and on your open day trip you need to ask the current students you know, what they feel they did right in order to get a place there. You need to choose a college. Now choosing a college at Oxford or Cambridge is something which causes some people a lot of anxiety but it you know quite honestly when you're there it just doesn't matter which college you uh, have chosen you can look up the statistics on the oxford and cambridge websites which will tell you how many students for each subject goes to each college and even what the ratio of applicants to offers is um, and uh, and you can take advice from friends and from teachers at your school but the, I think the thing, to, the thing I would say about colleges is don't, you know, don't regard that as the most important element of the application because it's not. You need to, you need to um, do all the things I've already mentioned. You need to have a great personal statement. You need to do relevant work experience. You need to do an EPQ if possible. Um, and you need to have done practice for the entry, entry tests. Um, and you certainly, in the case of Oxford and Cambridge, need to have done some practice interviews, ideally with somebody who really knows about the subject you're applying to study. So, for example, if you were applying to read um, politics, philosophy and economics, for example, at Oxford, uh, that's three subjects. You may not have studied any of those at school. Um, you need someone who can lead you through the process and help you think about the sort of questions you might be asked at interview. And... The key thing about the interview is that the um, academics interviewing you don't expect you to know a vast amount. What they're really looking for is that you are somebody who's willing to have a go at answering. And so when you are asked, as you certainly will be, whether you know the answer to a particular question, the answer might be no, you don't know, but you're going to have a guess anyway. You're going to have a stab at it. In other words, you're showing some kind of intellectual energy. Um, and having a practice interview helps. Um, you need to work hard and drive towards getting the three A star grades, which ultimately should be your goal if you're applying to Oxford and Cambridge. And if you don't get an offer the first time round, and remember only you know one in five or one in 10 for some subjects get an offer, you can always apply after you've got your A-level results if you get very, very good grades. So, um, the uh, be positive, work hard, know that it's possible, realise that getting into good universities, whether it's Oxford and Cambridge or other um, of the high tariff universities, is worth doing, it's well worthwhile and um, good luck.